Welcome to Stairway to Dreams, the 2024 Thistle Quilt Guild Show. This is our 21st anniversary as a guild, providing a friendly atmosphere for Pictou County quilters to stitch and share some quality time. We meet at the Westville Recreation Center. Our show is in the Westville Civic Gymnasium. Note the giant chair in front of the building and its creator, Ian Turner, who added a notice about our show to the chair. Ian's mom, Joan Waters, is one of our founding members, and Ian is here to help out. Let's go in and see the show. Get your tickets from our greeters. Your $5 entrance fee includes a beverage and some sweets. If you would like to examine the quilts closely, please take a glove or two for that purpose. The chain gang depicted here did not wear their gloves. You are asked to take a ballot to vote on the quilt for the Viewer's Choice Award. There is no special criteria. It is to be a quilt that you like the best. It should be well made and really appeal to you. If you are interested in becoming a member of our guild, please help yourself to an information sheet. Please don't trip over the racks. Chairs or decorative items have been placed over the rack bases to help people keep their toes away from them. We don't want you to trip and hurt your hip or anything else. There isn't a correct way to walk around the room and view the show. We are going to start with the big quilts. They are spread out as much as space allows for you to fully enjoy their beauty and to catch the detail that's involved in making them. A hand pinned to the quilt indicates that it was hand quilted. If you don't see one, it was machine quilted. Some members do the piecing themselves and have other people do the quilting, and sometimes the binding. We will start out with a beautiful big Bargello patterned quilt, whom no one wants to take credit for, but I found out that it was made by Janice Dion, and it's covering a bulletin board. Next up is Margot Fleury's Carpenter Star, machine quilted by Linda Rose. Beside it hangs a shared nine patch pieced and quilted by Jerry Cameron. The scrappy nine patch was a mystery quilt by Charlotte Hawks, pieced by Elizabeth Ramscar and machine quilted by Joanne Swanson. This 1957 signature quilt top was rescued by Rebecca McCallum in 2023 and machine quilted by Linda Rose. Deborah Battis pieced the English countryside and it was machine quilted by Joanne Swanson. Summertime was made by Virginia Call Glant. She did all the intricate machine quilting freehand. The oh so bright and striking illumination quilt was made by Carol Jackson. The pretty nautical quilt beside it is hiding something on the wall and not an official entry, but it's still worth a look. Peek around the corner to the right and you see a bright and beautiful poppy themed quilt, blazing red and glorious. It was made from a panel by Deborah Battis and machine quilted. Next to it is a lovely quilt made by Mary Wadden for our 20th anniversary challenge. It contains 20 blocks, which meets the challenge criteria. As the hand indicates, she hand quilted it. We will check out the quilts hung in the alcoves moving towards the front of the hall. The quilt with the golden tones and inset red and black diamonds was made from a Pat Sloan quilt along called Sweater Wreath. It was pieced and quilted by Rebecca McCallum. A Day at the Beach in those seaside blues was pieced by Kate Anderson and quilted by Denise White. A hand quilted study in black and white with a splash of color strategically inserted is called Tiddlywinks, made and hand quilted by Elizabeth Ramscar. As we move along, we get a better view of it. The large carpenter star in tones of black, gold, and cream was pieced by Diane Kelly and machine quilted by Joanne Swanson. Modern Geometrics was made by Rebecca McCallum. You may notice that some of the quilts have a distinct style to them. Rebecca's certainly have. I always find them interesting and wonder how she comes up with such creative ideas. Next to our geometric lesson is Carol McNeil's scrappy quilt, and of course, Carol hand quilted it. She is an avid hand quilter 
and works with the Holy Name quilters on other people's quilts as well as making her own. This quilt was made from three layer cakes. Layer cakes are packages of 40 fabric strips. It was pieced and machine quilted by Claudette Campbell. Its neighbor is a colorful, simple country sampler, pieced by Marilyn Murray and machine quilted by Linda Rose. Art is not for everyone, is the work of Rebecca McCallum. It has an interesting back as well, and we'll catch that as we go around the aisle behind this one. Sheila Conway pieced this quilt and had Joanne Swanson machine quilt it. She named it simply Sheila's Quilt. Ode to a Sewing Machine was made by Rebecca McCallum. Just a little bit of information about sewing machines. A sewing machine is a tool that many of us take for granted. Drawings, for one, existed as early as 1790. A French tailor named Bartholomew Timonier invented one in 1829. He and partners formed a company to make army uniforms, but other tailors rioted and damaged many of the machines because they were worried about losing their jobs. Often we will hear of Elias Howe inventing the sewing machine in 1846. This was man-powered versus electric and a great boon to sewers. All of the fabric stitched together prior to that was done by hand. Beside it hangs a simple country sampler, a rabbit factory design pieced by Mary Wadden and machine quilted by Joanne Swanson. If you compare it to Marilyn Murray's quilt, you will note how different the two quilts look. It's nice to be able to use the same pattern and get a very different result. The last quilt in this alcove is the work of Mary Wadden. Good fences make good neighbors. That gives us food for thought. A reason to build a fence and something pretty to look at too. Mary hand quilted this one. Turn the corner and hanging on the other side of the rack you see a study in color theory by Virginia Cole Glant. It shows different color combinations and how they work together. Virginia pieced and machine quilted it. Beside it is Renaissance Dreams by Deborah Battist. Deborah quilted this on her embroidery sewing machine. We will turn a corner and check out the next aisle. The cream and beige one is called Basket Weave, an apt name, pieced by Isabel Mason and machine quilted by Linda Rose. Beside it hangs Moose Buffalo Plaid, pieced by Diane Kelly and machine quilted by Linda Rose. Mona Lisa stares at us from this quilt made by Rebecca McCallum. Remember the art is not for everyone quilt? Well, this is the back of it. We told you to watch out for it. Block in a block is the work of Joan Waters. And notice the hand indicating that she hand quilted it. The turquoise and orange lap quilt was pieced and quilted by Joy Shimp Thompson. Reminiscent of sunshine and summer, the quilt named Portland was pieced and machine quilted by Deborah Battist. Nine Sisters was pieced and hand quilted by Claudette Campbell. This pattern was used for our Guild Raffle quilt in 2022. And what a lovely quilt it is. Jacob's Ladder is a popular quilt pattern. This version was pieced by Joan Waters and hand quilted by the Holy Name Quilters. Joan is a member of that group. Butterflies at the Crossroads was pieced and hand quilted by Mary Wadden. Bookcase was pieced and machine quilted by Rebecca McCallum. It looks like it should grace a home office or library in a special reading nook. Rebecca is also responsible for Paris paintings, a quilt depicting the Eiffel Tower and paintings of Paris by French artist Georges Seurat in the 1830s. We will turn a corner and head down another aisle. Looking to the right, hanging beside the smaller items, is a lap quilt, pieced by Zelda Stretch. Zelda passed away before she could finish the quilt, so her sister, Janice Dion, hand quilted it, naming it Zelda's last quilt in her honor. Turn around and have a look at what is on the other side of the rack. Obviously, Rebecca McCallum is an avid and prolific quilter. She manages to find and combine unique, interesting fabrics very artistically. 
This music themed quilt is called Made for Spencer. Rebecca pieced and machine quilted it. Girl Power was also made by Rebecca. It has a lot of interesting fabrics in its makeup. If you want to look more carefully at any of the quilts, you can pause the video and zoom in for a closer look. Emile's quilt was pieced and hand quilted by Janice Dion. There are a lot of small blocks on this one that had to be stitched around. Emile must be very happy with it. Congratulations to Cheryl McIntosh for finishing her first attempt at machine quilting this pretty floral stripes and scraps quilt with its bright red border. Scrappy quilts are often made to use up scraps of fabric left from the construction of other quilts. They are usually colorful and can be quite intricate. This version was made and hand quilted by Joan Waters. The diamond patch quilt pieced and machine quilted by Claudette Campbell is an example of a quilt with the squares on point, meaning that the squares are rotated 45 degrees to add interest. And to that end it was successful as well as being very pretty. The brightly colored rail fence on the black background certainly is eye-catching and is the work of Margot Flory, machine quilted by Linda Rose. We will go back up the aisle and come down by the Christmas quilts to have a look at the large quilt hanging beside some of them. The large star quilt in turquoise and neutrals is from a McCall's pattern, pieced by Kim Bland and machine quilted by Linda Rose. Nestled up to it is a square scramble runner made by Margot Flory. The teal, green, and gray piece is called a jelly bean quilt and was pieced by Kim Bland, machine quilted by Linda Rose. Best Friends in teal, red, black, and white was pieced by Sheila Conway and machine quilted by Joanne Swanson. At the front end of the row of Christmas quilts is a spring mystery quilt made and hand quilted by Jerry Cameron. The pattern was designed by Lynn Bourgeois. You start a mystery quilt not knowing what it will look like. You are given instructions on the material you need to purchase, then more instructions on how to cut that fabric, Next come instructions on how to stitch pieces together. That's usually given a bit at a time. Finally, you are given instructions on how to stitch all of the quilt squares together. When that's all done, the mystery is solved. This quilt top has not had any batting and backing added to it. It's known as a flimsy and it belongs to Sharon Smith, our workshop coordinator. The finished quilt will be this year's block of the month quilt. Sharon found a pattern called Be My Neighbor. She assigned a couple of blocks a month and gave instructions on how to make them. The pattern is a free one. It's available on the internet. A couple from Durham have made videos on how to construct it. Our members have taken some liberties with the pattern to make it their own. Across the front of the room, you see some of the completed versions of Be My Neighbor. We will start with Carol Jackson's which she machine quilted. She called it Small Town Nova Scotia. It has night and day scenes, a Sobe store, and a beach. The purple house on the top is hers. There's so much to see in this quilt that it could hold your interest for a long time. Sheila Monroe's version is next in line. It was hand quilted by the Holy Name Quilters. Sheila is a member of the group and no doubt has added some stitches of her own. In a softer color palette, we see the version pieced by Ellen Peters and machine quilted by Linda Rose. With a deep green border to set it off, we see Betty Richards' version, machine quilted by Linda Rose. Carol McNeil completed her Be My Neighbor and did her own hand quilting to finish it off. The colorful quilt with pinks, purples, and turquoise is also a block of the month quilt, just not the Be My Neighbor one. The colors and blocks blend beautifully, as we would expect from Gloria Turnbull. Denise White machine quilted it. This beautiful quilt featuring two children surrounded by lots of color and contrast is the work of Juanita Atkins. It's machine quilted by Joanne Swanson. Juanita also made the next quilt, which has a very different look, featuring applique florals on a bed of diamonds. Joanne Swanson did the machine quilting on it too. Our last but not least large quilt in the display is a nine patch pieced by Sheila Monroe and machine quilted by Linda Rose. That was a lot to take in, 
Imagine the hours involved in making all of these full-sized quilts. Did you know that burn quilts exist? You prepare a block of wood, usually a square, paint a simple quilt block pattern on it, and hang it on your burn. If you don't have a burn, you can hang it wherever else you would like it. Most people will put it outside for passers-by to see. The blocks are about two feet square. You can get a feel for the size of them from this image. Loretta called from Spruce It Up, taught a workshop for our members in April. It was very popular, so you are liable to see lots of these around the county. Some of the blocks didn't make it to the show because they are firmly attached to a building. What a nice way to add a pop of color to the outside of your home. Keep an eye out for these blocks as you walk around the room. They are intermixed with the large quilts. Quilters don't just make big quilts. They create wall hangings, pillows, placemats, table runners, and purses are quite popular. In the following images, you will see a variety of quilted items. I didn't mention clothing, did I? Here you see a jacket that's quilted, along with a pillow and some wall hangings. It looks like someone is dreaming about making preserves. A few of our members get together and pick a project to work on. The beach lady's wall hanging is properly called Bounteous Beauty, but someone nicknamed it Four Bums on a Beach. Each one stands for one of the ladies in the work project. Doesn't it look like fun? We often have quilted items that are put out to decorate for certain seasons and holidays. Summer, fall, and Halloween are represented here. The bag at center is called a rippity doo It's celebrating the ability to rip out stitches or perhaps bemoaning the need to. It depends on how you look at it. I remember being very excited when my father gave me the present of my very first seam ripper with the caution that it could be dangerous. There is a Nova Scotia tartan bag above it, a haunted house to the right, and a starry hanging at the center of our image. We have managed to include a few decorative items to keep you from tripping over the quilt racks. Framed pictures are another popular item for our quilters to make. This lovely, raw-edged landscape picture was designed and pieced by Wilma Jenkins. Hanging on our corner post is a pretty bag made by Shelley Tye. Marlene Tetford, one of our founding members, passed away this year. This is a small tribute to Marlene. You can see some of her quilted items in the display. She had a wonderful sense of humor and was a joy to have with us. She contributed a lot to our guild and we will miss her. Quilters tend to get pretty excited about Christmas, more so than the other holidays, so it has its own section. We will start by checking out these Christmas placemats. Nestled in with them are several wall hangings and table runners. We will take a walk down the hall and turn to our right to view more Christmas cheer. This beautiful hockey quilt was pieced by Mary Jean Campbell and quilted by Joanne Swanson. We can see a lap quilt called Boardwalk Snowman, pieced by Marilyn Murray and machine quilted by Linda Rose. On the chair in front is a little Santa gift bag. A huge Christmas poinsettia wreath was made by Deborah Battis. A nativity quilt behind the picture is called Away in a Manger, also made by Deborah Battis and some more snowmen caroling and carousing around in the snow is called Christmas Carol, and it was also made by Deborah Baddest, and Deborah quilted these herself. The framed picture is called Starry Night Santa. It was embroidered and quilted by Mary Jean Campbell. She made this on her embroidery sewing machine and credits making it with learning how to use her machine. It contains 960,000 stitches. Our Christmas tree is at center place here. The lights twinkle brightly and it's decorated with stars made by our members. 
To the right of the tree is a lap quilt showing off winter scenes made by Joan Waters. Note the hand indicating that she has hand quilted it. The pretty tree skirt was made by Wilma Jenkins. Behind the tree skirt is a quirky, cute quilt made by Rebecca McCallum. It's called Black White Christmas. To the right is a quilt with a multitude of colored blocks with Santa scoping out a fishing village. It's called Newfoundland Christmas and was made by Rebecca McCallum. When it comes to Christmas gnomes, this one was made by Deborah Battist. Deborah also made this lovely Christmas poinsettia wreath quilt. The log cabin with interspersed blocks of embroidery is a creative endeavor by Deborah Battist. Santa is sewing a quilt. It is called Hand Quilted Christmas and was made by Deborah Battis. Deborah has been very busy and she loves to make Christmas quilts. And then we see lots of Christmas decorations on this quilt called Peppermint Lane, paced by Marilyn Murray and machine quilted by Linda Rose. Poinsettias and Christmas trees adorn Let It Snow, made by Deborah Battis. Of course, hockey is played at Christmas time and this hockey quilt was pieced by Mary Jean Campbell, a machine quilted by Joanne Swanson. It honors that game. Dareway to Dreams is a variation on a traditional Jacob's Ladder quilt pattern. It was designed by Norma McCara. Every year we raffle off a quilt as a fundraiser. Norma McCara and Janice Dion manage the project for us. Deborah Battist was in charge of getting the tickets sold, and she sold a lot of them herself. Inset is a picture of the back of the quilt. It certainly was a group effort with members hand quilting it, binding it, creating a label for it. We often put labels on our quilts, so when they go to a new home, the recipient remembers where they came from and why. Norma McCara made a bag to hold the quilt when it's not on display. Janice is showing it to our members at one of our meetings. We thought maybe you'd like to see it too. At the front of the stage, we display our work from our various workshops and programs. We have a program most months at our meetings. They cover an interesting and fairly simple topic. Our workshops are almost as frequent. They're held on a day of their own and cover a more complex project. Isabel Mason was responsible for our programs this year. She started a YouTube channel during COVID to show us how to do little quilting projects. It helped to keep us connected when we couldn't meet. Isabel has gained quite a following and we affectionately call her our YouTube star. I'm including her YouTube address just in case any of you would like to check it out. It's really quite good. The first item that stands out is a biscuit quilt. Isabel shows you how to make it in a YouTube tutorial. The full-sized folded quilts with many colorful squares resembling stained glass are from a workshop taught by Wilma Jenkins. The name of the pattern is Magic Tile. We're going to move along slowly so that you can see all the pretty colors. Now that we have had a look at the larger quilts on the display, we'll go back to the beginning and have a look at the smaller items on the table. You can see an example of the biscuit quilt in progress, cases for scissors, and Christmas tree door hangings. We also have challenges. Someone challenges the members to make something using a certain criteria. A gift bag challenge was issued. We were to make something using a printed paper gift bag as the inspiration. Anne Maddie took her challenge a step further and made this colorful pillow. One of Isabel's programs showed us how to make small pouches suitable for holding numerous items for just about anything. We also had a jelly roll draw. A jelly roll contains 40 strips with the fabric cut two and a half inches wide. There are many patterns that use jelly rolls, and Isabel presented us with a very interesting program with a variety of ways to put them together. For the jelly roll draw, members brought in with the fabric strips of spring fabric 
and received a ticket for each strip they brought in. We had enough fabric to make three jelly rolls for the draw. Sheila Monroe taught a workshop on flower pounding. The fabric is treated first. You put flowers or leaves on it and pound away at it to transfer the color from the plant to the fabric and then you make something from it. Ruth Hopkins taught a workshop on making woven stars. Members could make a small table mat or a larger runner. And Maddie has taught her workshop on making this makeup bag several times and it's always popular. Three of them are decorated with seminal piecing. All have plastic pockets inside made from Ziploc bags. They can be put to a variety of uses. The log cabin table topper is from a workshop also taught by Ann Maddie. This is a favorite pattern for quilters. Beside it are some rice bags and some other miniature bags. We finish up with a couple of pretty pillows with decorative stitches. Just because the items are small does not mean that they are quick to make. The ones with many pieces take a lot of precision work to complete properly. A quilt show is more fun if there are things for sale. We have collected some gently used magazines and books, all about quilting, and we put them on the sale table at the front of the room. They are very reasonably priced. At the opposite end of the room, by the emergency exit door, we have for sale quilted items made by our members. It is a cash-only purchase. There are purses and pillows, microwave bowl holders, and some of the makeup bags like those you saw at the workshop display. Do you want a quilt for a baby? We have it covered. There are also some special tea towels suitable for gift giving. The stage contains many more items for sale. We have spruce it up and quilts by the bay as our vendors for this show. When this picture was taken, the show hadn't opened yet, so there isn't a crush of shoppers vying for position, just some of our helpers having a look around. The tables are well stocked. Look at all the fabric ready to be turned into quilts. The merchants brought along some beautiful finished quilts as an example of what you can make with their kits. They are all set up to ring up those sales and send you home with hours worth of sewing pleasure. There is certainly lots of fabric on this table and look at that beautiful quilt. Let's have a closer look at it. We will do a sweep around and see what else is for sale. You have heard about mystery quilts. Now there are mystery bundles for making quilts. There are all manner of rulers for honing your quilting accuracy. Here is a glow ruler with LED lighting. You recharge it with a cord and a plug like other electronic devices. Top left is one of those jelly rolls mentioned earlier. You can buy the equivalent of a jelly roll in a flat packet of batik fabric. There's a lot to draw the eye here. Look at the detailed stitching on these quilts. Someone has a lot of skill and patience. The Merchant Mall was a very busy spot for the day. Let us serve you. Tea and a suite are included with your ticket price. Join us in the tea room to the left of the stage. A dash of love and kindness to last throughout the day. One spoon of creativity to use in any way. Two heaping spoons of laughter adds a special touch. Combine it with a smile. You can never put in too much. If you choose to add a twist, you can always add a friend. Stir these things together and you'll have the perfect blend. This looks like a relaxing place for a rest and a chat with friends after viewing all the quilts. We ask the quilts in the show, not be ones that were previously shown. Quilts that decorate the tea room do not have that restriction. We use them to cover equipment left in the room and to add a bit of eye candy. Bon appétit! This colorful Shadow City wall hanging was made by Linda Crosby and it will be the subject of a workshop for our guild members in the fall. Some shows have judges for the quilts. We do not. We ask our guests to vote on their favorite quilt. There is no particular category for it. 
At the end of the show, the votes are counted and a winner is declared. You saw Eileen Betts handing out ballots at the beginning of the video. The winner receives a ribbon from the Canadian Quilters Association. Summertime by Virginia Call Gallant was this year's winner. Here you see a close-up of the detail in the quilt. Virginia quilts her beautiful pieces using free motion machine quilting. Check how skillfully she stitches. She moves the quilt for every stitch. A little recap is in order. It's always nice to look at the show from the stage. This panoramic view is quite impressive. Anne and Wilma, two of our founding members, are trying out the big chair. Anne and Wilma, and the rest of us, thank you for coming. Thank you to everyone who helped out to put the show together. To Corinne Walker for being our head coordinator and Carol Jackson for being her trusty sidekick. Thank you to all those who worked at the show and who brought items for it. We appreciate all your efforts to make the show a success. Thank you to those of you who attended. It wouldn't be much of a show if nobody came to see it. We hope you enjoy our video revisiting the event and it would be awfully nice to see you at our next one, May 31st, 2025. Mark your calendars for that one.